In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to install a blocker similar to Pi-hole using DNS to block trackers and ads on your unified dream machine. So I have the SE, but I believe this method, the same method will also work on the Pro. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the block list as a DNS mask configuration file so that the DNS on my network, which is currently configured to point at the dream machine, will incorporate these this host list, this host block list. So I have a repo called fetch ad blocker, which I will link to below, and it includes these files. There's a simple script to fetch the block list, and then there's a Python script, which you can use to pull down the Stephen Black host file. This is the file that's used by Pi-hole to uh, set up the ad blocker. There's also, in case you're on an older version, uh, a Python 2 version, but I'm going to use the Python 3 since that's supported on the latest software. And if you just look at this, you can choose exactly which host file you would like. I'm going to choose the gambling porn social block list as well um, as just the default. And then there's also a configurable but local blacklist here. For the files that I want to blacklist, these hosts will all return NX domain on my router. And there's also a whitelist for particular hosts that you might want to allow from your installation. So this is one of the problems in the Unify setup. If you use the the either the family or the work DNS block list that's provided by Unify. I found that it was too constraining and many of the sites that I like to use were blocked or had some kind of errors because the trackers embedded on those sites didn't work. And I wasn't able to whitelist the certain places that I like to browse on. So um, with this script, you'll actually be able to whitelist the, the places and the sites that you like to use. The rest of this, you could look through this. Um, this actually just pulls down the um, pulls down the host list, and this actually just pulls down the host list and strips out any special characters because that's not supported by DNS mask. You could actually do this whole process manually, um, but I recommend using the script. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, I want to edit the dnsmask.conf. If you just scroll down to the bottom, um, you'll see that in the bottom of this file, there's a place where you can configure directories that you could add. So I'm going to add this directory, dnsmask.d, in the Etsy folder for star.conf. That's not normally included, but I want it to be in my installation. So what I've done is I've created a folder called block list in my root home directory. And I've taken the liberty to copy those two files that I just showed you. You could SCP them over, or you could just cat them into a file um, and copy paste them, however you choose. But you can see it's basically the same two files. Okay, and so this is um, those two files. So now all I have to do is run the update block list script. And by the way, um, it's it's convenient to make them executable. So that would be chmod 755 on those if you want those scripts to be executable. You could also just interpret them with the script, um, the shell commands so as I'm doing, so it doesn't need to be executable. So if I run that, it's gonna take a second. It's a pretty big uh, block list. It's uh, 250,000 entries. And then I should find that this file has those files. And so what the script has done is it's formatted the host list as a DNS mask list so that all of the entries, including the blacklist entries, 
that I specified will be a next domain. And then all we have to do now is simply reload DNS mask. So this is actually part of the update block list script. So I'll just show that um, it does a force reload on it. But you could also do um, kill all dash hang up up DNS mask. Um, and another way is just to restart your dream machine. But that would obviously result in a network outage. So I'm not going to do that right now. All right, if I come back to my local desktop, then I should be able to test it pretty easily by looking up one of those domains. So doubleclick.net is a prominent ad domain, and you can see that my DNS server, which is configured locally here in my network, is reporting that that's NX domain. So this will result in zero ad traffic and tracking traffic being able to go to these specifically specified domains. It's pretty useful. Um, it brings Unify in realm of a pie hole style setup. It's very flexible and it works well for me. I have it set up so they don't experience a real degradation of functionality or sites that don't work in particular that often using this setup because the host list is uh, pretty well groomed and works really well.